Despite his fame, Paul felt an emptiness inside. Here I was the hero of the country and had a great wife and family, had everything that I ever wanted, was playing hockey, but I knew deep down there was something missing. Paul's unhappy demeanor was noticeable. I was watching a game one night, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs were playing, and Paul was interviewed be between the periods. I said to one of my staff members sitting beside me, said, you know, Paul Henderson should be the happiest guy in the world, yet he looks miserable. And I think that uh, what Paul needs is the Lord. Mel's next decision was a bold one. Getting Paul's address through a mutual friend, he decided to knock on Paul's door one day. So I went in and talked to Paul, introduced myself, and invited him to be a part of our hockey camp. So he was interested in finding some answers to life. So I had a very brief opportunity to tell him what a Christian, can, a Christian is, and um, that began the friendship. Mel and I started meeting. Uh, he'd given the Toronto Maple Leaf Bibles, and I, I was, had started reading it. A lot of it I didn't understand, and a lot of it, it was more confusing than enlightening from my perspective. But Mel was really patient with me. He spent almost two years with me. He grilled me regularly, and, um, but he was passionate about um, getting some answers because he discovered that fame and fortune, popularity, all the rest of it, uh, a great career and a wonderful family, uh, didn't fulfill the gnawing hunger inside. So he, he had to have the answers. Mel had this inner quietness and peace that just discombobulated me. I could see it in his eyes, and that's what I always wanted. And so the only thing that he had that I didn't have was what he called a personal relationship with the Lord. Uh, with Mel's prompting and with much fear and trepidation, March 12th of 1975, I actually uh, uh, had a conversation with God. I got up that day, I said, you know, Lord, I really believe you. you are who you say you are, and I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. And, Come into my life, make me the person you want me to be. Eleanor started to notice changes in Paul. I think a quietness coming over him, to be able to relax and enjoy the smaller things in life, not having to be scheduled from morning till night and go, go, go. She was very skeptical about this, but thank goodness she saw some changes in me and then started reading the Bible and found out that being good was not good enough. You needed a savior also. and so. Thank goodness, several months after I did, she became a Christian. After retiring from his hockey career in 1981, Paul went to seminary. After two years, I really became, I became convinced there was a God in heaven that loved Paul Henderson very much. In 1985, under Campus Crusade, Paul founded a unique men's organization, one that offered spiritual mentoring to business leaders. Since its humble beginning, Leader Impact Group has established over 100 leadership discovery groups across Canada and internationally. I will never be without a men's group because it's incredible how we'll be in that group and even a guy that's not even a Christian yet will share something and that's exactly what I needed to hear for that day. Through building trust and lasting friendships, these groups have helped hundreds of leaders to discover the relevance of faith in their professional and personal lives. Man, it was like getting punched in the stomach. That, you know, cancer? How could I possibly have cancer? I um, was totally taken off guard by him having cancer. But when I was really stunned is when, I guess it was about our second visit with the oncologist, and he said, well, you know, it's at stage four. It means multiple places. It's not like stage four of another tumor type of cancer that is very advanced. So my lymph nodes, they're popping out and it's obviously my blood. Much like how he dealt with the challenges of playing hockey, Paul has been facing this incurable form of cancer with courage. I just refuse to worry about it. I try to live life as full as we can today. Through this difficult time, both Eleanor and Paul are leaning heavily on their faith in God. I know that God didn't give me cancer, but I know he's very aware that I have cancer. And I said, okay, Lord, if this is my lot, then I need your help. And I unashamedly pray for help every morning. 
but I have no fear of dying whatsoever. At 69, what matters most to Paul Henderson are his family and the many men that he has befriended and influenced over the years. To each of them, he's left a lasting legacy. His friendship is been extremely valuable to me. Uh, we speak often two or three times a week, and um, he's been my number one encourager. He is just thankful for every day and what it brings, and he lives it to the fullest. I know I'm a better person because of Paul, and, and uh, not many people get to leave that legacy uh, when it's all said and done. Someday, if I have that same impact on my children, then I succeeded. End of story. Oh,